How's it going, folks? My name's Nick. Otto, my co-star, is somewhere back there, hanging out, doing this thing outside. Garden cat. And uh, it's a Tierra Permaculture vlog. I'm uh, going to do a pretty big homestead uh, work day today. I'm actually going to, hopefully, the goal is to essentially compost all the beds, clean up and compost all the beds. That's kind of my goal uh, for this morning. So it's going to be probably not, I'm trying, trying not to make it a super long video because uh, people like the little bit shorter ones. So I'm going to try to just kind of cut in and out and show you what I'm doing. Lots to get done today and I don't want to waste your time. So let's get started. All right, first up, rain gauge. Looks like just under 0.3. And a little bit of that was yesterday. I didn't actually check it yesterday. So I'm going to call that a quarter inch of rain last night, which is just perfect for me not to have to think about any sort of watering. Everything is just lightly wet. So it must have, uh, it must have rained recently. It must have rained just this morning. So uh, everything's pretty happy. Love getting rain right in the morning. Nice for the, nice for all the uh, plants. Here's Otto, my co-star, decided to show up. Hey bud. Yeah. He'll probably be running around. He's, uh, he's very hyper this morning. I've noticed he's uh, been running all over the place, so he'll probably be around with us the whole day. We'll see. This guy was out this morning. I had to come put him back in. I don't really know how he got out. He must have flown. Maybe it's time to cut wings again. Other than that, we got the mama and two babies down there. Henry's across the way, right underneath here right now. I'm guessing other mama's in the egg box. Let's see. Yep, there she is. She's not even squawking. She must be getting ready to lay real quick. All right, so I'm just gonna get everything ready for the chick feed and be right back. It's a bunch of water at the bottom of my feed tray, or feed bin, so I gotta dump that out. It's starting to get a little smelly. Note to self, I gotta buy more feed when I'm editing. Oh yeah, sometimes I leave my note, notes to myself while for when I'm editing these videos, then I'm like, oh yeah, the thing I'm gonna forget until I actually sit down at a computer again. So this is what I've been doing to kind of keep my bin from filling with water, but it's apparently not working. Maybe we'll try one of these now. So this is the uh, bags that all the wood chips came in. trying to give it a little bit of a waterproof seal. Henry, come here, bud. Come here. He gets his own little private area over here. He's liking it all right. I think he would prefer to be with everyone, but they don't, they don't quite want him yet, so he has to deal. All right, well, I guess Henry's a little camera shy this morning. He doesn't want to come out and see. Otto's not though. Not us here, ready to show his face wherever we are. There's your soaked feed, right here. In there, mama. Right here. One little happy family here because other mama is currently laying eggs. So she's not around to disrupt this whole little family gathering. If she was around, she'd basically kick out uh, this mama and her chicks from eating and they'd have to run away and wait for her to be done. But she's, uh, let me see. You unhappy about it? You unhappy that they're eating without you? Yeah. She's a very vocal one, that one. All right, so compost is right down here at the base there. That's kind of all the finished stuff. So I'm gonna start kind of harvesting that and uh, it's gonna end up going into the garden and that's what we're gonna be working on. More than likely, I'm gonna be attacked by mama a few times during this whole process. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can convince them to go down to the pasture below and hang out down there for a while before, uh, before I start doing everything because then I can just har harvest it all without them being all over me. Thank you for your pollination services, B. 
It's very sweet. Alright, so this stuff, this compost right here, is pretty much done. Nice smell, smells like forest floor, that's what I'm looking for. Nice, nice fungal growth in there, humic acids. And I'm just gonna uh, scoop it up with my hands today, because uh, I can't, I don't need to worry about, it. it's all pretty much broken down enough. If you look here, it's hard for you guys to see, but there's a bunch of crumb structure. So there's a bunch of small little uh, kind of coagulations of soil and organic matter that's caused by the bacteria and the fungi kind of creating those aggregates it's called aggregates micro aggregates and macro aggregates the micro aggregates tend to be formed by the bacteria and the macro aggregates more so the fungi so they are uh, just small little clumps of the soil that's that's uh, or the compost really but turning into soil small little clumps all together and while, I've, while I'm taking it out, I'm just picking out any of these kind of weeds that are still growing in here, which is just, just happens where I am. We have coitre, it just grows abundantly no matter what we do. Alright. See this mama? She just keeps attacking me, even though I'm, I'm just out of my way. I'm, all I'm doing is harvesting compost from the compost I built for you guys. And she just thinks that she's in charge, and she's the only one who gets to play with it. She was down here with her chicks, and she came up to attack me. But uh, again, I'm happy my mama is very protective, right? We're happy about that, but man, it gets old sometimes being attacked all the time. I'm going to work bed by bed here. So I'm going to start on this bed here, and just kind of try to work up, and then we'll get to that one, and then the ones further up as we go. And... Um, I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning. I did some cleaning, I think, last week, but I'm just going to clean up a little bit all the excess growth that came in the next, the past week, basically. And uh, these cucumbers, I keep thinking they're going to be done, but then I keep seeing, like, nice, fresh, really deep green growth down here. So um, I'm going to try to work around the cucumbers at first. I might end up taking them out just because I think they're pretty much done, and I can prep this bed for something else. Um, because they're not really producing, they're pretty sad. So I'm gonna take a look at it as we go and uh, I'll update you at the end once I finish all that. chicks down there. That's the first time I've seen them in the dust bath. That's so sweet. Let's see if I can get any closer. Little sweet chicks in the dust bath for the first time. At least this dust bath. Mom must trust them enough to go down over here now. Good to know. I haven't seen mom actually take them up there yet because I didn't think that she really thought they were ready yet, but now I guess they are. All right, so this bed, I just kind of tore most of the things out. I uh, left a few things I kind of want growing or just I'm gonna see what happens with them. And next thing I'm gonna do is aerate the soil using a garden fork. And then after that, I'm gonna add compost and then this one's done. Well, compost and then mulch if I have enough. And then uh, this one's done and we'll keep moving. So when you're aerating, try to get the garden fork nice, lift the soil, don't turn it. Lift it, let it breathe, put it right back down. So again, with the, when you're aerating, try to get this thing as deep as you can get it. And you lift, you can see how it kind of, I just lift all the soil, air space gets down there, and that's it. It's just a lift and a release. You can see right here, it's a little bit 
tight. That's all right there. Lift. All right, this bed is now cleared and aerated. Now I'm gonna add compost. I don't really have a certain amount I'm gonna add. I'm just gonna add a nice little light dusting throughout the whole thing. It doesn't need much if it's good quali high quality compost, you don't need much. So let's see, that's one five gallon bucket. After I spray it out a little bit, let's see how we do. All right, so there's a nice composted bed. Nice fresh layer of compost on top. And notice I'm not trying, I'm not mixing it in or anything like that. I'm just throwing it right on top of the soil. Nice and easy. And uh, that will be plenty. I used uh, probably seven ish gallons. Um, pretty bad with the gallons to liters uh, conversion. I'll figure that out for you another time, but, uh, or maybe I'll leave it in a little kind of subtitle here. Um, but yeah, I used about seven gallons. That's probably more than enough than I, need, than I actually needed to use. But uh, that's uh, that just kind of felt right. That's kind of what I do. I just kind of throw it on. And I'm trying to build soil here, so I don't mind adding a little bit of extra. And here in the tropics, so much growth produces, uh, takes so much from the soil that a little bit extra uh, compost isn't going to hurt anything. So yeah, I basically cleared a lot of these cucumbers. I left one vine that seemed to be producing a decent uh, sized one up here and a couple nice fresh green leaves. But I expected I'm gonna end up taking this out really soon. And uh, there's a papaya tree over here that I left. I don't really need another papaya here, but uh, just for now, I don't really mind it being here. This right here, this is Malabar spinach. Um, this is an amazing, if you're in the tropics and you can get your hands on some of this, it's amazing. It's, it's more uh, gooey, if you were. It's more kind of uh, gooey than like a regular spinach, but it, it grows abundantly as you can see here. And it's a great, it's a vining spinach. So you can see it's just climbing up the side of my chicken pen here. And all this is edible just both for us and for the chickens. Um, you can eat it fresh. A lot of people like to use it in a stir fry instead. It kind of takes away that gelatinous kind of gooeyness to it a little bit if you, if you fry it up um, or saute it or something like that. It'll be kind of more like sauteed spinach. If you, if you saute it, it'll taste more like actually sauteed spinach. So, um, but you can see these, it's producing these huge leaves because um, it loves it right here. And you can see this huge uh, vine and this was actually just a volunteer. It just got started growing from a little piece that got thrown in and here we go. It's all along the fence line now. It'll just kind of keep growing and growing and uh, it'll keep providing greens for us. Oh, here's the uh, king of the cucumber trellis here, showing off his little, with his little push-ups. That's what they like to do, they show off. If I do push-ups right back at it, if I kind of go like this, they usually will respond to me. It's pretty fun. Um, I'm just kind of a weird, weird person that way, I guess, a little lizard, lizard talker. But really what he's doing is showing off his dominance to this one right here that was climbing up. But he actually uh, jumped and went that way. So maybe he sees someone else he wants to challenge on another tree over there. But there you have it. There's a nice fresh composted bed here. I'm gonna continue with this and uh, I'll probably just keep on kind of rolling it in fast motion so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, and uh, might give you an update at the end uh, just to kind of sign off after I get a little bit more done. I'm, I expect to be out here for many hours today, so I'm not gonna have you guys uh, with me that whole time because I think you would uh, pretty much abandon the video at any point. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna keep going and uh, we'll check in a little bit later.
All right, folks, a few hours later, where I've just completed the kind of initial task of just garden bed cleanup and compost, and I've added some more mulch, so I'm just gonna walk you through what I did. The New Zealand spinach, it just never took over. It didn't get enough light, maybe, or it wasn't really happy with the, the tropical climate here, so I just kind of gave up on trying to make it uh, grow where it didn't want to grow. That just happens sometimes, you just gotta live with it. So this bed, I uh, kind of ripped everything out and then cleaned everything up a little bit, added compost, aerated, uh, and I cut down the banana here and laid that across to basically add some more kind of nice, heavy, bulky mulch. And then in between each row here, in between these rows, hey Otto, no, nope, that's the garden, can't go in there. In between each one of these rows, I planted uh, arugula. So it'll be another kind of rows of arugula, hopefully, if they actually take, we'll see. Um, and this will just be another bed of arugula and nice little greens. It is kind of semi-protected by these bananas right above it. I did actually remove a lot of the leaves here, so it actually got more sun, because I've noticed the arugula here does like a little bit more sun. Um, it's okay with part shade, but it does want a nice, decent amount of sun. So that's what happened with this bed. That one's done. You can see I have a whole bunch of excess leaves still to use for mulch or something. See this bed, same thing, basically just added mulch or added compost and then remulched it with the uh, banana leaves just to kind of give it a nice little protection. Um, we do have a potential uh, tropical storm coming. It hasn't developed into a tropical storm yet, but it's predicted to in the next day or two. Uh, and currently the models have it coming right at us. So I'm kind of doing all the things I want to do to make sure the soil is protected in case we do have a huge uh, rain event um, this weekend, this coming weekend. So we'll see. Finally cleaned up the tomato bed and uh, composted and then remulched right on top. It's actually a bunch of those peppers that have been here for a long time. They're actually kind of growing quite tall now. So pretty excited to see that. Hopefully they'll make it to fruition and with that little bit of compost will help. This bed, I didn't really weed too much. I pulled out a couple things, cleaned a couple things up and added compost and then just kind of in between these uh, chives here, I also uh, added that kind of bulky mulch just to help protect the soil there. I uh, tried to spread out these uh, these zucchini here. These guys still haven't really produced anything, but you know, I'm kind of hopeful. I'm always hopeful about it. We'll see if it actually works or not. <laughs> uh, let's see, right down here, I just seeded some, uh, some Asian greens and some kale just to see if they'll take at this point since most of this bed is clear. Um, I don't have any transplants kind of ready to go in, so I, and I, I prefer to direct seed anyway, so. I basically just direct seeded after I had compost and aerated, which I did earlier, I'm sure you saw that. And uh, yeah, we'll see if they take, we never really know. The Asian greens I find here, they take without, they can direct seed really easily, they actually prefer it. So I, I have a suspicion they'll be just fine. We'll see. And then of course, uh, this bed with the uh, zucchinis that still have yet to produce, there is one on there yet again. I'm not gonna get too excited because Every time I get excited, that little flower part falls off and then we don't get it. But that one looks like it's maybe actually developing fully. Um, the flower's still on there and it's not, uh, it's not yellowing at all. So I'm just fingers crossed that it's actually gonna produce for us. But uh, I basically just uh, cleaned this bed up a little bit and added compost throughout. I will add a little bit more mulch in the spots that are nice and bare. Uh, you can see this chili, check out this chili vine here. This is just like, it's starting to produce like crazy without me doing a single thing to it. Look at all these chilies here. So this is a great variety. Um, I think it's a Thai chili, you see there's some red ones. And these things just pull right off when they're ready, so super easy. And that was, there's my harvest right there of hot peppers, which makes me happy because I like spicy food. And there's even more on there still. The melon that I had trellis, it's not really super happy. And the one that was kind of happy, I accidentally cut when I was cleaning, whoops. Um, so we'll just kind of see where that goes. You can see there is one on here, but this thing looks really sad, super sad. So I'm not really sure if these are going to make it. They're all planted right up here. Um, planted those a while back, but you know, we just keep trying. We're trying to find the varieties that work for our climate and for our site. Uh, and if they don't work, it's, it's okay. You know, we're still learning. Um, I start, I'm starting to get more of the local Puerto Rican seeds now from just from friends and, uh, just finding them here and there. So. Uh, more and more we'll probably have seeds that are more adapted to our site. So that's kind of the goal anyway uh, Yeah, so that's uh, that's all for this vlog. Hope you enjoyed if you do like what I'm doing Please subscribe to the channel it really helps me get more reach and uh, have that motivation to keep going I think I'm above 150 subscribers now uh, Thanks to you guys and and that's just amazing for me to kind of see that support and see the 
that there's 150 people that actually want to see my videos. That's really exciting to me um, in just a few months' time. Um, so thank you for all that. I really appreciate your following and, and uh, your sharing of these videos and the channel and everything. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. And until next time, have a good one.